10 minutes ago, the rapture has finally started. The Bible has several accounts that detail the end of the world. After a thousand years, Christians believe Christ's millennial reign will end. The end of the world will come after that, and only then. The tribulation and the rapture would arrive soon. In other words, do you know what the rapture warning signals are? In this video, we're going to tell you about the rapture and different revelations related to it in the Bible. Stay tuned. The Bible predicted that the end of the world would occur after the rapture. During the rapture, Jesus would ascend with his faithful followers to heaven. Only true believers among God's offspring would be selected for an eventual ascension to paradise. Other people who don't believe in God will stay on earth and miss the rapture, meaning they'll have to suffer through the seven years of tribulation with the believers. The rapture would be sudden and happen after a series of warnings. To spot the rapture's telltale indications, people need to be on the lookout. What is the rapture? Christians who anticipate a two-stage return of Jesus Christ hold a common belief. For starters, there's the rapture, in which believers, both alive and dead, are gathered to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-17 According to this perspective, the rapture will be concealed from the eyes of the world's unbelievers because it will involve the bodily transformation and bodily gathering up of all Christians, dead or alive, to meet Christ in the air. The departure of so many humans from the planet will have a noticeable impact on it. When the seven years of tribulation on earth are up, Christ and the raptured members of his church will return to the planet. Matthew 24, 30, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, 1 Peter 1, 3, and Revelation 1, 7. When he finally defeats his foes, he and his saints in the church will rule the world for a thousand years, the millennium. The great white throne judgment takes place after a thousand years and involves the living unbelievers and the wicked dead who have been brought back to life. The lost will spend eternity apart from Christ in the lake of fire, while the righteous will enjoy a brand new universe with them. Revelation chapters 19 through 22. Still, some in the evangelical Christian community hold that the end of the seven-year tribulation period is necessary for Christ's return and the rapture to take place. According to the second theory, Christians will be taken up in a public display of Christ's visible and triumphant return to put an end to the present evil age. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-17 it is unclear at this time if the thousand-year reign of Christ on earth is a metaphor for the time leading up to the white throne judgment and the appearance of the new heaven and earth. Many Christians disagree on specifics regarding the end of the world as we know it. The Bible is vague about the timing and sequence of some of these occurrences. What matters is that Christians agree that Christ will return one day in power and glory to establish his millennial kingdom over a reformed and resurrected saintly population. In God's own time, we will learn the specifics of this momentous occasion. What is the meaning of Revelation 7, 9, and 10? After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could count standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. During the church age, God is working through the church to reconcile the world to himself. Nonetheless, it is through the people of Israel that he will once again communicate with the lost world through the tribulation. After the church is taken up, God will work through Israel to complete his redemptive plan. When Christ returns as their anointed king, it will not be the church proclaiming the message of the grace of God to a lost world, but rather 144,000 Jewish evangelists. God does not want anyone to perish during the Great Tribulation, but rather wants everyone to repent and put their confidence in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. During this time of Jacob's trouble, the 70th week of Daniel, an untold number of people will be rescued by God's grace and by placing their faith in the Lamb of God, who will atone for their sins. 
Joel 2.1 Priests, blow the trumpets in Zion. On my holy mountain issue a warning. Let everyone who lives in the land tremble with fear. The day of the Lord is coming. It is very near. Israel was the elect nation of God. If they put their faith in and obeyed the Lord, they would be blessed. But if they disobeyed and rebelled, they would face judgment and punishment. The day of the Lord, as it is called in the Bible, is a time when God both judges and forgives his people. Both the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah were disciplined by their respective defeats at the hands of Assyria and Babylon in the Old Testament. The day of the Lord, according to both the Old and New Testaments, is when disobedient Israel will repent and return to the God of their forefathers. As their foes are wiped out, God will shower his people with blessings, and the prophesied Messiah will appear in the clouds of glory to set up his heavenly kingdom of peace and prosperity on earth, all of which they have long prayed for. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 BCB Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and immovable. Always excel in the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in his service is not in vain. Paul concludes this significant debate by urging the kind of faith that should follow from facts so wonderful and hope so high, as these facts are suited to communicate in light of the big and glorious truths that have been revealed to us about the resurrection. The admonition is so simple that it hardly requires any justification. It is the logical conclusion of Paul's argument, and hence its enforcement is unnecessary. O hydration to stand firm. This is derived from the Greek word for heaven. In light of the reality that you will be resurrected, I implore you to stand firmly, confidently, and firmly in your faith. Hold fast to the faith. Do not let the wiles of the adversary of your soul, the force of sin, or the sophistry of phony philosophy sway you. Vita. This word is more forceful than the former, but it conveys the same basic idea. Christians are to hold on to their Christian faith and hope in the face of adversity. Continually productive in the Lord's service. Devoted to bringing praise and honor to God and furthering His reign. Domain which connotes not only doing this, but doing it with great effort and success. In this context, labor of the Lord refers to anything the Lord demands, including all of Christ's rightful responsibilities. Paul urges them to be examples of every Christian virtue and to do everything in their power to spread the gospel. Because you already know, you know it, because of the evidence presented in support of the gospel and because of your firm belief that it is true, your efforts will not go unrewarded. It is not like passing away means never living again. The dead will rise and you will be compensated fairly. Then, anything you do for God's glory will not only earn you God's approval and the joy of this world, but also the beautiful and eternal pleasures of the next. You will not waste your time or effort working for the Lord as your efforts will be rewarded in heaven. The verse, as a whole, conveys the message that we should be motivated to make tremendous sacrifices for the glory of God, because He is the one who revealed the teaching of the resurrection and the hope of future glory. The prospect of glory, pleasure, or wealth motivates and inspires other individuals to tremendous endeavors. Christians should be motivated to work hard and give up worldly comforts by the promise of eternal glory, and the reassurance that their hopes are not misplaced. Matthew 24, 36-42, NIV But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Hence no one knows the exact time of the rapture, except God. This ends the video for today. Do you know any of the signs of rapture that you've witnessed in the world? Let us know in the comment section. Also, let us know what topic we should cover in our next video. Like and share this video. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you in the next video.